it's near and dear to my heart because like I said, I told y'all many times before, I don't watch the news. I, I hate politics. I really do. I can't stand it. I, I can't. I don't think there's a word to describe how much I really don't care for it. But when it gets to the point where it's attacking my freedoms, my liberties, and my and everything that I believe in, then I actually start paying attention. And I want to show you all some of that this morning. But, you know, why are there so many attacks against the Bible? I mean, the Bible's been around for 2,000 plus years, and there's still the same attacks against it. And today I'm going to answer that question. Why do so many people hate it? Why do they deny it? Why don't they believe it? But this morning, we're going to start with our text again uh, in the book of Psalms. We're going Old Testament today. And that's where we're going to find a lot of these answers. In the book of Psalms, chapter 119, we're going to start verse 142. In Psalms 119, verse 142. This whole chapter of 119, it's a lot of scriptures in there, but a lot of it answers a lot of questions that we're facing today in verse 142 it says thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is truth jumping down to verse 151 it says thou art near O lord and all thy commandments are truth and lastly, we look at verse 160. Again, it says, The word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning right now, Lord, to help answer some of these questions that are facing us today, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you'll just move me out of the way and you preach this message to your people to God as you see fit. Father, this is your word and this is truth. So, Lord, just let every word that comes out of my mouth be from you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. These attacks come in like three forms. All right? We're going to look at some of these attacks. When we look at military assaults, a lot of y'all have, have military families or y'all have watched a lot of movies about military and stuff like that. Uh, there are like three major assaults, three main ones. You have your frontal, your flanking, and your and what they call some call ambush or a rear attack. All right. So you know, with the help of my two little aides over back there, we're going to look at some of these back now. So we're going to look at the frontal assault. All right. So a frontal assault. All right, you two, come on. Demonstrate a frontal assault. So. If I was the person that they're being that being attacked, okay, yeah, right. That's supposed to like run and scream. But you see, the frontal assault is from the front. Is they're going to attack me from the front? All right, y'all go to the sides. All right. So the frontal assault, you can sit down, little Jimmy. They they're good now. They're going to hide back there. But they uh, the we look at that. That is a frontal attack. There's you attack from the front. All right. Now, what that means is, is everything you have is being poured into the front, all right? It's both good and bad sometimes. It leaves you vulnerable. It exploits some of your stuff. But it is a full frontal attack to the line enemy rather than from the back or from the sides. Now, when we look at that, that style of attack is the bold attack. It's very bold and it is and it's saying because a lot of these people that are very outspoken against the Bible, that are very boisterous vo about it, they are bold in what they believe. They do a frontal attack, all right? They straight up deny it. <clears throat> it is a direct attack against God's very nature, saying the Bible is a lie. Well, how many people have, have we heard that say the Bible is a lie? A lot of them really not going to say those words precisely, but they'll say, man wrote it. 
Okay? So if man wrote it, then how can man be trusted? Let me give you some. Let me ask you a question. Who pulls the trigger on the gun? The gun or the man? What is the gun? Is it not a tool? Right? Yeah, you know, we ban guns. All, we're trying to ban guns all the time. But it's not the gun's fault Amen. that it was used in the crime. It's the man's fault. The man pulled the trigger, right? Who wrote the Bible? Man was just the hand that held the pen. Amen. God conducted that hand and wrote it. Just as if man pulled the trigger on the gun. You see, we may people may call it a lie because why do we go against things a lot of times when we don't understand things what's our nature we destroy it or we find a way to disprove it so we attack it that was the frontal attack we go against its very being its very nature and try to attack it here's some reasons why the frontal attack is done the gospel doesn't fit their possibility structure it doesn't fit their lifestyle that's why they go against it because it doesn't fit their lifestyle. It says a lot of Christians haven't looked for a common ground. They believe that Christians are just out there to judge people and condemn people. And a lot of times that is true. There are a lot of Christians out there that are nothing but a bunch of holy, high and mighty holy rollers. That's all they are. They think that, every, that they are above everybody. If Jesus came to this earth to serve and not be served, what makes us any different? Amen. You see, that's where a lot of churches at times have been brought down. That's why a lot of people, that's why the church pews are empty today because so many people walk through those doors and they're scared because he's like, we're going to be judged. Yeah. So that's why a lot of times I do what I do. I have crazy colored hair tattoos i do crazy style messages because if i'm a little crazy up here then those people that are feeling judgment judged are a little bit more comfortable back there because you know what i don't care if people judge me i really don't it's not gonna hurt my feelings i'm not gonna lose sleep over you but you see they don't understand sin and guilt the lost people don't they don't understand what it means to like when we look at the ten commandments one commandment that you know people say well i've never murdered anybody well let me ask you this have you ever wished anyone dead you are like well yeah i think then you're guilty of that one because see when jesus died on the cross he brought the spiritual aspect of the ten commandments yeah, meaning yeah. you don't have to commit the actual sin you don't actually have to kill someone you do it in the heart and you still you still committed the crime see they don't understand the sin and the guilt they don't want to believe that they can be punished for something as simple as gossip. It's like, well, gossip's not a sin. <clears throat> thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That means thou shalt not lie against a fellow person. Your neighbor is anybody out there that breathes. It's not the person that's next to you. It's everybody. Thou shalt not lie against anyone. That is gossip. Gossip in itself is a lie. That's why I hate soap operas. Because a lot of lies and a lot of gossip started from soap operas. Because it is nothing but a bunch, bunch of gossip fest. That's all it is. The questions aren't answered. Their questions aren't answered. The biggest question in life today is if God is such a as good and loving God, why does he allow innocent babies to be killed why does he allow this person to be killed why does he allow all these bad things to happen to good people what you don't see is what's going to happen to that person 10 years down the road how is it going to affect that person 10 years down the road how is it going to change their life so drastically that they may be the forerunner of the faith you see why did god allow paul to persecute christians hmm let's think about it Paul 
was a murderer. He killed Christians. He tortured them. That was his job. He was a very educated man who went around busting down doors and brutally attacking and killing Christians. That was his job. All of a sudden, he was Saul at that point, but now he's Paul. He's the forerunner of the faith. He wrote half the New Testament. Well, how is that? But you see, why does God allow good things to bad things to happen to good people? Because of that person, like Saul was, then he would became Paul. You see, Paul asked God to remove this thorn from his side. In my little bitty imagination, I believe that thorn was the images of the people he persecuted. God never let him forget where he came from because that is what gave him the strength to push, to do better. Paul became the forerunner of the New Testament church because of who he was. So we look at the crime, but we don't see what's going to happen 10 years from now. Ethics are a barrier belief. Yeah, we look at that. Ethics. Let me tell you something. If y'all want to get into an ethical debate, I can go with you on that one and take it outside of the biblical realm into some of the stuff that is going on in the world today that's not even biblical or ethics. That word does not even exist in politics today. Mm. I'm just going to tell you right now. The word ethics does not exist in politics today. And when we, we can even take the Bible out of it for just a minute where it's just a being a good person doesn't exist. Because if you vote on this person and you do this for this person because this person tells you they're going to do this, this, and this. The minute they get into that position, everything they said they were going to do, they totally change. So you see, when we look at that, there's a barrier belief. They, they, they will come up with excuses to deny the Bible. That's the frontal attack. All right, boys, do a side attack. Come on, do the flanking attack. The flanking attack is coming from the sides. You see, they come in from the sides. All right, now y'all go out again. I'll get y'all a second. All right, that maneuver is used where the armed force come in from the sides of everybody. Instead of the frontal, they take on the sides. They surround them, come in from the sides. Now, these people are especially dangerous because they say, I don't care what the Bible says. Let me tell you what I've experienced. These were the so-called false prophets of the day. You know, Paul had to deal with a lot of these people in the, in the Corinth and because they were people that would tell you, you know what? I like to be do this, this, and this. They're the false prophets. All right, let's look at today's time. Entertainers. Charismatic preachers. All right? But they believe more in money and numbers than they do the Bible. I will tell you this right here. I will take a church with 10 people that are sold out for God more, any day of the week than I would that's got 10,000 that believe in nothing but money. Because Jesus changed the world with 12. Amen. 12. 12 rejects from society. He changed the world with 12. <laughs> Imagine what I could do with 10 that are 100% sold out for Christ. You know, if we were all sold out for Christ, and if we truly believed in the saying, come as you are, these pews would be full every Sunday. Amen. Because that's the thing. No one, everybody's scared to come to church because they're scared of what they may be judged. You see, you see this stuff right here, these false prophets, the entertainers of the day, they were the ones that would, would tell everybody, you know what, I don't care what the Bible says, I don't care what it means, I'm going to tell you what I believe or what I've experienced or what I've been through. You know, let me tell you about me. Does that sound familiar? Let, let's bring it back to some of them televangelists. Just send me your money. Send us your money. God has compelled us to tell you that if you would just give, if we would raise a million dollars, this isn't this. What happened? Hmm. 
You know, you think about it and look at history. The Crusades. How many people were killed in the name of God that were innocent? You know, we can even go into, I can bring it into the Salem witch trials. They believe that the witches have done ran the world and this and that. And if you go back in history and you look at all that, every one of them women was about innocent. Because man believed that if they couldn't explain it, it was of the devil. And it needed to be destroyed. Are we any different today than we were back then? No, we just got better at it. We've got better at hiding our intentions than we were back then. I mean, think about it, we have. We've got really good at hiding our way of destroying things, you know. Uh, I served for 23 years in the military of my life. My greatest honor was that. I've served it. I've seen the evil in man. I've seen how dark man's heart can get. And I've seen many of them sit there and say, in the name of God or in the name of Allah. I don't know who Allah is. I've never met Allah, never prayed to Allah. I don't expect I ever will. But if Allah was any kind of somebody, do you think he would want you to strap a suicide vest to a 10 year old kid and tell him to go that way and, and hit the button on him? Do you think that would be something he would want? But that's what they would do. In the name of Allah, they would do that. And see, when it comes to my point about this, as Americans what, on the battlefield, what is some of our biggest weakness? Children. So we bring it into the ambush, which is the sneak attack. All right, boys, do the sneak attack. All right, so the ambush is what I call the rear attack. Hey, you two, come on, sneak in here. Goodness gracious, hard to find good sneaking, good help these days. <laughs> hard but the ambush is the long established military tactic in which the combatants take advantage of concealment the elements of surprise see there there's one of them where's the other all right he's sneaking in somewhere too probably but they take the the element of surprise and attack an enemy combatants all right these people are the ones that use yep see there we go Sneak in here on you. All right, y'all good. Go sit down, boys. Y'all give them a round of applause. All right. These people are what's going on today. Because today, this is what we see. We see a lot of sneak attacks from the rear that are ambushed because these people use psychology, philosophy, and legal terms. These use legal terms. Now, I'm going to go through some politics for just a brief moment. But it's because all of this relates to us. This is stuff that has been pulled from the Texas House and state bills. And there's a big push in Texas that's called hashtag ban the Bible. It's true. This is actually pulled from their website. This is House Bill 191. Now, this one amends the property code to create sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression protected classes. So you can learn more about it, all right? It also forces religious homeless shelters, colleges, and universities to allow biological men to sleep next to women and abuse shelters and dormitories. Well, don't stop there. It forces property owners and religious groups to allow men access to women's showers, locker rooms, bathrooms, and vice versa. That's, listen y'all, all of this I'm about to show y'all is actual bills that is going through Texas state legislature. Now this isn't some northern state that's all liberal that we're all in. This is our neighbor. 
This one right here. It allows the government to punish counselors, marriages, or anybody like pre preachers, anything that to you that use Christian perspective in their counseling sessions. It allows the government to punish them. It would effectively ban people from using the Bible or referring to principles in the Bible during their counseling sessions. Now, I had a couple people a couple weeks ago that came to me. We sat in the kitchen for about two or three hours, and they just wanted me to talk with them about marriage. And I used the Bible. According to this law, if it gets passed, I could be put in jail for doing that. This one forces the government contractors to endorse beliefs contrary to their religious views in order to serve their com communities. We've seen that. And so this one right here would force would force Christian employers and Christian business by violating their Christian views on marriage by being forced to provide insurance coverages for spouses and same-sex couples. This one right here, this one right here really hits me hard because this one says it eliminates the words man and woman throughout the family code when discussing marriage. You cannot say man and woman anymore. Even though the Bible says God created man, created woman. But you see now it eliminates the words husband and wife when discovered discussing the word marriage. It eliminates husband and wife. It also eliminates mother and father when discussing both parents in a male-female relationship. And then here's a, me and Donna were trying to figure this one out. It eliminates the word female when referring to someone who's pregnant. Because the rest of that sentence I took out because it was stupid. It says, meaning that a male can't get pregnant. I'm like, how many of y'all have seen a male get pregnant? <laughs> I mean, listen seriously. How many of us have seen that happen? No one. Yeah. Was it meant to? But they don't want it to be female because just in case a male can get pregnant. Hmm. I, mm, see, we have gotten stupid. I'll put it out there, stupid. A person could be subject to criminal prosecution for resisting a sexual advance by someone who is discovered to be gay, lesbian, or transgender. If they advance or try to hit on you in a sexual manner and you reject them, you could be criminally prosecuted. Y'all remember the uh, hell in a handbasket? Lord, help us. We have gone past that point right now. Amen. We have surpassed the hell in the handbasket. We done threw the handbasket out the way. We're on a, we're riding that highway to hell, son. It don't stop. This division would grant taxpayer dollars to the LGBTQ <laughs> groups. And this division would work to make groups that advocate and promote sexual orientation, gender identity. The bill would confuse children into thinking that they are neither male nor female. Purposely confuse the children to where they don't know if they're male or female. Think about it. Your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren are going to grow up in this style of environment. This right here is a world watch the list 2021 this shows you 50 countries where the bible is banned it is strictly banned you see the ones in yellow and orange are very highly prosecuted the ones in dark red are extreme the extreme ones list North Korea, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan, 
Eritrean, Yemen, Iran, Nigeria, and India. Those 10 are the extreme ones. The extreme ones. You see, he's like, it's not going to get to America. Y'all know Mexico? Guess what? Mexico, the Bible's banned. Does it not border us? How much longer till it reaches our shores? It's there. It's here. We're just not paying attention to it. We're not seeing it. But you see, here's the problem with a lot of this. You see these attacks, these assaults on the Bible? It's because men think they can live on our own without God's help. Men believe we can improve on something God created. We can make it better. Let me, let me show you all something. In the very beginning when God created man, did it not say that he walked in the garden with Adam? Amen. Adam, this is where I'm about to get a little bit scientific on you, sci-fi on y'all. Adam and Eve in their first creation were immortal beings. Amen. Before sin, they were an immortal being. We were not created to initially to die. Man was created to live immortally. God walked with Adam, meaning... Adam looked upon the glory of God. Why? Because Adam was a perfect creation at that point. There was no blemish in him. He was perfect. There was no sin. And then when sin entered the world, man could no longer look upon God. Man was no longer an immortal being. He would die. But you see, we've tried to improve on that. Most of the times when you see Bibles in houses, they're used as bookends to prop up other books, collect dust. They're not worn out, torn up, pages fall apart. But the main thing, the main reason why men deny it and they create these outrageous bills in, in the politics is because they don't want Anything that shows them their lifestyle is wrong. Amen. It's wrong. We don't like to be said told we're wrong. We don't. None of us like to be said you're wrong. Listen, sometimes there was a part of me at one point, I would argue with someone, even though I knew I was wrong, I would still argue with them till they gave in. Because I didn't like to be told I was wrong. I'd sit there for like two or three hours arguing with somebody, knowing I'm wrong. But I'd still argue with them. I would. Well, because I didn't like to be told I was wrong. I didn't like that. But you see, I don't, you know, when we were living a life of sin, none of us want to hear the simple thing that says, for the wages of sin is death. None of us want to hear that adultery, that all this stuff is condemn God condemns it you know the little sign I throw there on the church says don't condone what God condemns don't condone what God condemns that's what's happening in the world today the world is condoning what God condemned in the beginning and they are wanting us to follow suit with it they are wanting us to conform to it and when we don't conform to it when we stand up for what we believe they want to prosecute us, to persecute us. America, <clears throat> America has not seen persecution. It does not know what persecution is. You see, going back to this slide, America is not one of those countries where the Bible is banned. But America's day is coming. America's day will come. There was two nations created, or two nations dedicated to God. Israel and America. And what I'm talking about is the day on Plymouth Rock when America's first year in that time, this nation was actually dedicated to God. Amen. So was Israel. And just as ancient Israel fell because they were doing the same thing we're doing today, America will fall. America will fall. We will know pers persecution one day. We're heading that way. You see, they call it a lie. 
and deny because they're scared of it. I mean, let's think about it. We're humans. When we don't see something we like, we destroy it. Kind of like me and snakes. Uh, when I see snakes, I'm not very keen to them. And if it's a poisonous one, I find a way to destroy it. Don't ask questions. I just, it's gone. You know, the world looks at the Bible like I look at snakes. They don't like it. They don't agree with it. They don't believe it. So therefore, it must be a lie. Man wrote it. So it's a lie. But we will take a book wrote by Dr. Phil or Oprah Winfrey and they will believe every single word of that. That's truth. It's true. Well, who wrote it? Man. How do you know it's true? You're just taking someone else's opinion and believing their opinion over yours. Listen. The Bible doesn't have an opinionated. It's a fact. Amen. It's facts. It's not one man's opinion over the next. You look at the book of Revelation. And if you read the book of Daniel, the Old Testament book of Daniel is the same as the New Testament Revelation. They both predict the end of the world. And they are Siamese twins when it comes to that. In order to understand Revelation, you have to first understand Daniel. But you see, the Bible, people don't want to understand it. They don't know how to understand it. I mean, you look at like in verse 105 in Psalms, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Let's just take that one right for example and dissect it. How would you understand that verse? How would you interpret that verse? Is it a literal lamp? Is, a, is it a literal lamp? No, it's not a flashlight. It's not a coal lamp. How is it a light into my feet? But I'm telling you right now, in a time of darkness, when you're going through a period of darkness in your life, this book right here will give you the light in your life that you need to light your path and be a lamp to, you, to all those around you. Because you see, it's not about a literal light or a flashlight. It's about being a beacon of light. It's like a lighthouse. What is the purpose of a lighthouse? It's so everyone, every ship in the, in the bay can see the light in the dark. To warn them that there are rocks ahead, that there are shores ahead, that things are ahead, there are dangers ahead. Is the Bible not like the lighthouse? Does it not warn you of the dangers ahead? Yes, it does. But you see, they're lost without God and His Word. They will forever be lost. They will. They don't know what a compass is. They don't know how to read a compass. Because you see, here is the compass right here. Amen. This is the compass. And when you don't believe in this compass, you will forever be looking for true north. You will forever be lost. And you will forever and ever be doomed a hell of torment because people like to choose the easy path the easy road which is I'm just going to do it my way Frank Sinatra saying that song my way I did it my way I did it my way <clears throat> let me tell you the people in the world that did it their way there and believed it my way was the best one day, they're going to wish they would have did it God's way. Amen. Because this is why they deny the word of God. They don't want to be punished for their lifestyle. They don't want to believe that their life can be doomed. 
They don't want to believe that so that they can be punished for something that they did wrong. We just like our kids don't want to believe that they can get a spanking because they did something wrong. They don't want to be punished. Neither do we as adults. But you see in Matthew 4, 4, it says, it is written, Jesus was telling them, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And it's true, man shouldn't. Man shouldn't live by bread alone. He should not. But you see, because one, the Bible is our substance. The Bible gives us what we need to survive. Chris, let me see. Come here. He'll walk with me. Come here, buddy. Come here. Yeah. There we go. All right. We're going to have you come up here and preach with us. See? Now we're doing good. All right. See? So we look at man. Yeah. Here, you want to play this? He said, this is how I feel sometimes. I know, man. But uh, he said, man, you should not breathe my blood alone, but out of the mouth of God. Think about it. See? I know. He said, let me go. Let me go. Let me go back to mama. I tried. I tried. Sometimes it works. Hudson likes to get up here sometimes with me and preach. It work. But you see, think about it. That's how we feel. Just like that. Just like that baby crying. That's how we feel when we are punished. We want to scream and holler and cry and throw a temper tantrum because we didn't get our way. What do you think happens in politics today? What do they do? They scream, holler, and throw fits but when they don't get their way, they put it in legal terms so everybody else has to obey it. Because they think they can do it better. They do. They think they can do it better. But it says in the Bible, Jesus said it, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We can't make it better. We cannot improve on this. We can't. There's actually, you really read in the back of Revelation. There is a curse on those that try to add to or take away from this book. Amen. Those that have tried to take away from this book or add to it is a condemnation upon them. Because this is the word of God. So why? What are you living on today? What bread are you living on today? Are you living on God's word or man's word? That's the question. What runs your life today? What type of attacks are happening in your life today? Are you allowing the attacks? Are you personally attacking the Bible because you don't believe every word of it? Or do you accept it that God's word for what it is? You see, we can't pick and choose what portions of the Bible to believe and not believe. We can't. Can't pick and choose it. You either believe it all or you don't believe it all. Amen. That's it. Plain and simple. It applies to us all today. That's the main thing. There's no way around it. What was wrote in Genesis 1.1 all the way to the end of Revelation applies to us today just as much as it does the day it was wrote. It does. Whose word are you taking and living on today? God's or man's? That's the question I'll leave you with. Until you can answer that, you won't know if your compass is pointing at true north. Amen. Let us stand.